What's up, y'all? This is Chitty Bang, and I'm on the Renegade Millionaire Show, the podcast that profiles entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs. Join us as we go one-on-one inside the hearts and minds of some of our generation's best and brightest. And now, introducing your host, my friend, Sun Group Wealth Partners Managing Director, CNBC and Forbes.com contributor, Winnie Sun. Hello, it's Winnie Sun today, and we are back on the Renegade Millionaire Show. We are filming from beautiful Venice Beach here in Tune In Studios, where Susie and I actually went and took the tour of LA to get here. But I'm very excited to introduce you to my guest today. As a reminder, I'm a financial advisor, managing director of Sun Group Wealth Partners here in Southern California. So if you have any questions pertaining to your own investments or your portfolio, of course, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I would love to speak with you. Please take a moment to bookmark this show so we can update you on our latest posts. And you can follow me on Twitter. And you know what that means. That means I'll update you on the Forbes pieces that I write, uh, CNBC appearances, and so much more. So with that, without further ado, real quick in terms of planning, let's talk about financial planning. I would encourage you to take a look at those budgets. It might be a good chance for you to consider next summer vacations, and it doesn't take that much maybe the cost of your latte for the day, but it would recommend you take a look at how much you want to spend, where you'd like to travel to, and start a budget to do so. If any questions on that, of course, you know, you can reach out. And we do have a really nice, easy budget worksheet on our website, which is located at sungroupwp. Dot com. Again, that's sungroupwp.com. And with that, I'm really excited to introduce you to my guest today. She's not only a good friend of mine, but I'll tell you, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I'm disappointed to say is as I've gotten busier, one thing that I haven't spent as much time on as I'd, I'd like to is charity work and helping others. And, and this new relationship, and Lindsay was actually introduced to me from my superstar content producer here, Susie Day. Along, uh, I guess, Susie, it's Susie's best friend, Susan's daughter, it's just Lindsay, is doing some incredible things. And um, what I would encourage you to do at this moment when you're listening to this is take a moment and pull up Google and type in love song photography as we talk to her today. So she's got a lot going on, so I'm going to read the bio to you right here. So excuse me, but we got to do the rundown. She's a Southern California girl married with one, two, three daughters. She's been doing photography now professionally for about three years as well and has a company business Facebook page that's actually only been around for a year. You're not going to believe how many followers she has. So Facebook, Love Song Photography, um, welcome. Hello. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. Thanks for joining us. So um, I don't want to murder your name, so tell us your full name for us. Lindsay Natsik Viatoro. That's a long name. Yes. We are just talking about the hyphen. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do people get that wrong sometimes? All the time, yes. So it's better they just stick with love song photography to Correct. find you. Yes. But you've got, some, you've got some incredible following here. Let's talk about 2011. So you are a single mom mm -hmm. in a very tough custody battle. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Yes. Um, my ex and I were going... Um, we were in court going for custody for, I believe my daughter at the time was nine. She's 12 now. Um, and at that time, I had full custody of my daughter, and he decided overnight, well, I want 100% custody. Oh. So anybody that's involved in a custody, custody case knows that it takes a lot of time and energy out of you. So I was working for the county of San Diego. Um, I had a nanny. I left my house at 5 a.m. I got back home at 5 p.m. if there was no traffic. And I really did not spend a lot of time with my kids. So at that time, that's when I really started praying about just what direction do I go into that is going to allow me financially to support my kids and to be there emotionally and most importantly, physically, because that was... That was really what I was lacking at that time. My nanny did everything. She got the kids ready for school. She gave them breakfast. She gave them baths. She did really everything. She cleaned my house. So by the time I got home, really the only thing that I could do was scramble for dinner, 
give them a bath and put them straight to bed. So um, in the middle of that custody case, I was missing a lot of work, and they they understood my situation, so they were extremely supportive on that. But um, my boss, I've actually known since I was eight years old, and I um, confided in her a lot about my life and what was going on. And she just said, you know, there's something bigger, there's something better. I don't know what, but there's something that's going to work out. So right before my boss's election, um, because I worked for an elected official, she brought me in the office and she said, look, you're not going to be happy about what I'm going to tell you, but I truly feel that this is what needs to happen in order for you to kind of just get out there. Um, And on the weekends, I was... um, doing weddings, designing weddings, and I was always the friend with the camera. But I never had a professional camera. It was always either on my phone or just like a point and shoot, just something like very simple. But I always had a camera. So wait, wait, real quick, I'm going to interrupt you. So what mm-hmm. did she tell you? Did she let you go? She she brought me in the office and she said, um, I know that you want to start a business because I was doing the weddings on the weekends. And right. she said, but right now you can't do that because you're in the middle of the custody case. And financially – you cannot pay your bills with zero income. So she said, this is what we're going to do. We are going to um, lay you off um, with that understanding that if it doesn't oh, work she, out, In the middle can, of a custody battle, you get right, laid off. Okay. Right. And she said, um, this way um, you can collect your unemployment, and I believe that it will allow you to just – grow. And I'm like, what? Right. You know, like, how is this even happening? How is this good news? Right. They're and paying she, me a picture. I got laid off, but it's a good thing because you're going to get unemployment. Right. Oh, yay. And anybody that's ever been on unemployment knows that that is not even comparable to your income. Correct. So I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just well, going to kind thank of- thank you. Right. I guess I'm just going to kind of go with this. And she said, Lindsay, I assure you, if it does not work out, you can come back. And I'm thinking, um, well, this is not going to work out. But okay, we'll just try it. So for some reason, I don't know why, but I had my uncle's camera. And it was like a total crappy camera. It was not a professional camera. Um, It wasn't like the box camera that I guess you would say moms have. It was, you know, actually a camera where the lens came out. and It's an SLR. It it was, but it was like a $200 camera. Right. And – um. I, I had it for some reason, and I said, okay, well, can I borrow this? Like, you know, can I use this? And my girlfriend came to me. She hated her wedding images, and I did a lot of editing. And she said, can you just take my pictures, and if I hate them, you can just edit them. And I'm like, I guess we could just start from there. So I started doing that, and then um, it was literally like word of mouth with my crappy camera. And... I I remember editing on a 12-inch laptop that Verizon gave me, like with my phone plan. If you paid the extra $25 a month, you got got the computer. Yes. And it was 12 inches. And I remember thinking at the time, like, this is so cool. I can edit it in my bed. I didn't even have Photoshop. I used an online, like, company that it was free free that anybody could use. So I remember – like where I started, my clients would come in my house. They would literally hold their backdrops. Like the husband would hold the backdrop behind them and the wife would like secure whatever she was trying to secure. And I would just take pictures with this total shitty camera. Like it was terrible. So then my business just like started picking up and I remember somebody's like, do you want to shoot a wedding? And I'm thinking, a wedding? Yes, they're great <laughs> money. Yes, I want to shoot a wedding. <laughs> I'm going to pay my bills now. Yes. So um, that's kind of how that developed. And then after I was shooting weddings, I remember telling my husband, um, if I ever make it, I will never shoot a wedding again. Ever, 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 and ever. And he was like, this Worse is to eat, right? Yes. <laughs> and he was like, um, it's good. It's good money, but it's so much stress it's it's so much at one time but but i remember like now i would say that but then i was so extremely grateful that i somebody booked a wedding with me so i think it was either in the interim of 6 to 9 months that um 
my husband, we were we were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time when I was going through the custody case, but we did get married. Um, and I remember saying like, okay, we're going to buy a camera. And he was like, this is $1,300 we're spending. And we thought that it was like so much money. And and now looking back three years, the camera equipment that I have now is like 15000 20000 And it's like completely different night and day. I mean, I complain about the 27-inch computer that I now edit on when I used to edit on a 12-inch computer. It ge- it gives you like something to look back and look forward to. I mean, but let's talk about that. I mean, you photographed everybody now. You photographed so many celebrities. Yeah, I have I have um, photographed a lot of celebrities. Typically, when I started out, it was completely a fluke. It was um, I went to buy one of the major things that I did is I went to buy lighting equipment. Because I didn't have lighting equipment, I literally used a bedroom light that was $20 from Ikea. And it, like, almost looked like a flower. (laughs) And I, like, took the lights, like, yeah, this looks good down. This looks good up. I mean, they sell them at Target. It's like the – it's a bedroom light for a kid. That was my lighting system. So we're like, okay, now you can buy, like, a real light. So we went to this lighting company. And before I went there, I called – and I asked this guy all these all these questions. And I said, you know, what kind of lighting system do I get? And he was kind of telling me, like, well, how much money do you have? Because there's there's everything under the sun. Right. Um, so he said, just come in here. Well, when I went in there, we totally hit it off. And this guy, Jay, which I love to death, shoots everyone and any a- anyone under the sun. Mm-hmm. I mean, and where is he located, this Jay? Um, he's in, he has a studio in Orange County and he has a studio in LA. Okay. And he basically just said, like, I'll help you if you mm-hmm. want to learn. I'll help you. And at first, my husband kind of looked at him like, Yeah, like for how much? Mm-hmm. But he was like, No, honestly, I I really don't offer that many people help, and mm-hmm. I I want to help you. You have the drive. Mm-hmm. So I went in there a couple times, like during his sessions. He shoots for Nordstroms. He his his thing is like print print work and that was not my thing I really want to get to know the person instead Mm -hmm. of just like come in my studio shoot and leave Mm -hmm. um but for learning it was excellent Mm -hmm. so he taught me so much so much um and then just from there it was like the relationships that I have made in the past whether it was when I was four years old or when I was 15 years old or when I worked for the county for an elected official, whatever it was, I really just kind of branched out and I went to my contacts and I said, look, this is what I'm doing. Um, If you're interested in this, I started with headshots, then I moved into families. Um, And that's, that's really just kind of how this whole thing developed. And the celebrity thing, that was a complete fluke too. Um, They kind of have like a small family. Um, because the people that I photograph, I don't photograph the celebrity specifically. I photograph their families. So to let them in or to let me in, um, into their like circle and have them trust me with their baby or whatever it is, um, is something where they don't just pick up the phone and and like go off of, Right. Oh, I saw a cute picture. Like they could go off strictly sure. with referrals. So how many? So maybe you can name some celebrities that you photographed already. I think the the first like big named celebrity that I ever did was Shamar Moore, mm-hmm. um, and he is on a show called Criminal Minds. Um, sure. He's super sweet. He's so down to earth. And what was funny is when I start when I went to shoot him. I had no idea who he was, mm-hmm. and that's typically how this whole thing always always so how happens. Did, so, so let's let's talk about that. How did he find you? Um, he specifically did not find me. I actually shot an event that he was at, um, and so everybody was like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna be here. He's gonna be here." And I'm thinking, I have no idea who this person is. But then when he walked in, I'm like, "Oh my goodness, he's on TV!" And my friends are like, "Yes, that's who we're telling you the whole time." So. Um, so they, how did you get him from seeing him there and then to photographing him and his family? Um, no, I he's actually not married. He um, doesn't have a specific family. Um, I have not photographed him. I, his mother suffers um, from an illness. And when we were talking about documentations and things like that, that's like next on our bucket list to do. Um, but in order for that to happen, we've made a couple appointments. And in order for that to happen, she has 
to be like pretty in good spirits and not sick. So um, the the couple times, I think it was two times that we were going to plan and do it, she was sick. So the only thing that I, I have shot with him was that event. Um, and we have conversated since then, but we don't have like a specific um, appointment nailed down. Sure. I mean, and that's kind of a quick segue. I'm really excited to talk about your forever love sessions because as I kind of had teased in the beginning, I wished I had more time to help more people. But I feel like through you, we can help more people if we support you and your activities. The the thing that Lindsay's done that touches me and why she's on this show, I mean, on top of being extremely eloquent and just beautiful in person, just she just shines and radiates from within. But Lindsay has made it of a point to document and tell stories and highlight people who are going through some of the most horrific, but also the bravest times of their lives. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping you could share with the audience just slightly what that means. Yes. Um, When I started doing the photography three years ago, it was nice to meet somebody and make them feel pretty, whether Mm -hmm. they were pregnant or, you know, capture those moments of them being engaged or things like that. But um, my girlfriend that was an extremely good friend of mine that we worked with at the county, um, her husband was diagnosed with cancer. And when she was diagnosed or when he was diagnosed, it was like their entire world fell. Um, Nothing was really positive. Everything was so negative. She was pregnant. They didn't want to take maternity pictures. They didn't want to take family pictures. They didn't want delivery photos. They wanted nothing. They basically just wanted to forget about this moment that ever even happened, like, in their in their lives. And I encouraged my girlfriend, like, you have to tell him that when your son is born, this can be something that you can show him and you can say, look how brave your dad was and look mm-hmm. how much he fought to be here for you and kind of flip the negative into a positive. And she said, well, I can't tell him, but you got to tell him. So I went over and um, and I said, Herman, look, this is the situation. This is supposed to be like such a joyous time. Chrissy's having a baby. You're having a son. I know that it's completely, you know, the whole the whole situation on on what you ever planned of of having it in your future has been thrown out the window but this is life circumstances right now so given that it's life circumstances right now like let's make it as positive as possible so so, so create this documentation through, right. through photos right right and um, my goal initially was just to take these pictures and mm-hmm. he let me in on so much of his life so I went from absolutely not I hate pictures to mm-hmm. Yes, let's let's take pictures of everything. Okay. So, um, so how long does the process take? How how long were you with this family? Um, I was with them for a little over a year. Okay. So throughout this journey is when I was like, "This is rad. Nobody mm-hmm. does this. Mm-hmm. Nobody takes these types of images. Nobody goes in a hospital room, sits with somebody while they're in chemo, sits with somebody while they're in radiation, you know, talks to doctors, things like that, and almost advocates for the person, but mm-hmm. then photographs these memories as well." So I thought, okay, now that he's kind of got me started on this, I want to open this up. And I not only want to do documentations, but I also want to photograph memories of people that are no longer here. And if you've ever seen a family photo of somebody that has died, the traditional thing I would say is to really just hold a picture of the person that has died. Right. Whereas to me, I did not want to do that because my whole point is storytelling. So... If I'm telling a story, you should be able to know what I'm telling you without seeing that actual photo. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, set aside from a forever loved session, let's do a loved and lost session. And I just randomly came up this with this after my mom's brother died. And I thought, how can we allow our family to be accepted or, or, or allow my family to be okay with taking a family photo without having the brother in the picture that just died suddenly? Um, and so I thought, what is this person like? So I, I would come up with these questions like in my head. So let's say dad passed away suddenly, or maybe he died of something that you knew that he was going to die from. Um, but I would interview the family and I would ask them, what's dad like? Does dad like the chargers? Does dad, you know, did dad go to college? Did dad like sure. to garden? Things like that. Sure. And I would interview them and then I would storytell 
their images like that. So if dad was a musician, I would have his kids holding a guitar. If dad loves the Chargers, everybody's sure. wearing so they're, Chargers they're jerseys. Mm -hmm. So well, that's perfect. I mean, and then I know that this, the, these these stories that you've done have really gone viral. I mean, they were featured on CNN, KTLA, CBS, everywhere. One of the, the videos that really resonated to me was the one where you actually filmed um, one of your clients getting married. Mm -hmm. And I know that that story has completely gone viral. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could share, I think that story, like if, if you haven't heard of Lindsay, you should go on her website and check out the story because I know you just did a refresh, an update on that family recently. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I couldn't stop crying reading this, but it was so touching and I'm excited that to share with what you've done. So I was hoping you could talk about your t-shirt campaign because a lot of these people are at the end of their life and they're struggling and the families need help both financially and also to tell these stories, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And one thing that you've done for them, not only through pictures tell their story, but you're also an incredible writer. So you've written um, texts or I would say their journey with the photo so that the rest of us in the world can learn their stories. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go from pictures to telling the story? I mean, to taking, to, to actually writing this in Facebook. Well, my, I, I think my whole goal is to show people that when you look at a photo, um, it's not just ever a picture, Re regardless of what photo it is, whether you see the person happy, sad, whatever, there's always a backstory. So um, I did a story of an 11-year-old girl who um, married her father, but she did not marry her father. Right. Um, she act, I, My whole goal was she thought that she was having a birthday party. She wasn't having a birthday party. Um, I basically threw a wedding together in three days. Because her father was dying. Her, her father had pancreatic cancer. And um, I basically wanted to just video that moment of her dad walking her down the aisle. So when so she, she does... That moment when she does get married she can play that act at her actual wedding mm -hmm. so um her dad gave her a ring but he gave her a promise ring mm -hmm. um he promised to always be there for her regardless of if he was here or in heaven you know things like that and it was like this beautiful ceremony and she got tons of birthday presents and cake and things like that and that was like a very um happy moment that was or at one time traumatic but in 15 years from now, she's going to have she's that. She's going to be so grateful that right. you documented that. Right. right. So um, that was my first, like, actual, I would say, story that went viral that was over, like, a 10 million views. View, right, um, on YouTube. Correct. I think it's more than that now. I just looked at it recently. Um, I I don't know what, what that one is. But the, the other one that was, I would say, twice the size of that was um, Ashley's wedding. And yes. Ashley... Um, has terminal cancer. Um, mm -hmm. She's actually at this moment paralyzed. Um, but when I did her wedding, basically um, I started documenting her when she was pregnant. Um, I she, remember that was beautiful. She's she, a beautiful girl. She's, yeah. she's so pretty. Um, she found out that she had bone cancer when she was 10 weeks pregnant. And in her eyes, she was like, of course I'm going to be bone cancer. But the doctors told her if, if you do the chemo, there's a huge possibility that it will terminate your pregnancy. And I believe the the um, percentage that they gave her was an 85 to 95%. So she said, um, given the fact she's had a miscarriage before, she said, absolutely no way will I terminate this, this pregnancy. It's not going to happen. So um, she had her, you know, continued the pregnancy. And at eight months, her left side of her mouth went numb. She went to the ER, make a long story short. And they said, oh my gosh, you not only have bone cancer, but you have terminal brain cancer. It's on your brain stem. It's inoperable. Um, and they gave her a year to live. So right before they told Ashley that, um, I'm sorry, right after they told Ashley that, I photographed her um, two weeks later and she was eight months pregnant. So then I just asked her, like, do you want to document this journey? And she said, yes. So I did her maternity session and I did um, her newborn session. I did family session, Christmas session. And she told me that before she died, she wanted to get married, but it was like a finance thing. And I said, well, if that's all that it is, like, let me just throw this together. So um, it, it took like about, I would say, three weeks to really finalize everything, but um, six weeks from when I said, let's do this. 
And um, her wedding was about $86,000. It was this lavish wedding. And it was it was beautiful. Um, she had all of her friends, her family there. Uh, and she had her, I mean, she had more, she had like four photographers. Or no, she had four videographers, um, two photographers. But it was like everything that she ever dreamed for. I know. I saw you dancing in the video. And I saw your uh, stepfather, David, was in yes. the video too. It was yes. like so... It was very special. It was nice because when I do these things, people always think like, oh, you have this full-on staff. Well, yeah, the staff is my 12-year-old daughter, my 8-year-old daughter, my 1-year-old that just runs around and, like, gets people to smile or whatever it is. And if I can have the opportunity, I totally pull my family in. Mm-hmm. So I, my stepdad married them. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom was there for the occasion. And my five best friends set the whole wedding with me that day. So together, like, we make a pretty good team. But Mm -hmm. a Monday through Friday team, it's just typically me. Yeah. I mean, that was amazing. So so let's talk about that. I mean, this is the type of stuff that I've been telling. Since I met you, I can't tell you how many people I've told your story to. And people start to tear up and they're like, oh, my goodness. I used to think I was doing a good thing. But now that I've heard Lindsay's story, I just feel like this small. And I say, well, I think this is an opportunity for us to help and support Lindsay in what she does. So I know that, you know, your husband, Otto, wasn't that keen on you doing all this. I mean, he loved the fact that you were helping people. But at the end of the day, you had to support your three daughters too, right? So you had... Um, maybe you could share a little story about it. I mean, he, he was like, I know, honey, that you, you're really passionate about this and we want you to help, but we got to pay the bills right. too. Right. So, um, and obviously you didn't ha- want, you didn't want to, or you, and you don't have any of these, these clients pay for your services, uh-huh. but you didn't have, there needed to have something to put food on the table. Uh-huh. So I know you went out and you sold t-shirts. Uh-huh. So let's talk about that. Selling T-shirts. Originally from 2012 to 2013, um, Otto and I funded about $20,000 worth of sessions. So basically, before I kind of had this whole thing like systemized. Otto's her husband, by the way. um, I My clients would – I opened up my Facebook a year ago and when these stories would just go viral, like people would be like, well, can you document me? Can you document me? Can you share my story? Can you do this? And unless somebody is physically my client, I cannot share somebody's story, nor can I share their GoFundMe page. Um, and that is – So the I GoFundMe w- page helps them pay for, like, their medical expenses and right. such, and right? Right, and it's not it's – not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a GoFundMe. It could be, um, you know, Some a, sort you of way of raising or, money. or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, the, they will see how – drastically those numbers go up when I feature somebody when you feature on, their story. on my Facebook. You're so, almost like a 2020 for these people. You know what I mean? You're like a like a, a real TV show, but through your Facebook yeah, I, page. I, I think that it not only gives them financial support, because some people that come to me, they don't want the financial support. They mm-hmm. want prayers or they want meals or they want Disneyland tickets or they want last minute wishes or whatever it is. They want to feel so, that someone's listening and caring right, about they, them. Yeah, they just want to feel loved. Mm-hmm. And... I think that when I share their story, I showcase that in a way where they can feel love from Australia or, mm-hmm. you know. You do. I see people posting from, like, India, Australia, right. like, little tiny towns in Scotland. It was, like, Right. It's, it, it's, it's everywhere. And I think that that's really cool because when somebody is going through literally the most dramatic moment in their life, uh, it's nice to have somebody from, like, the outside circle in that mm-hmm. says, like, Absolutely. We love you. We care about you. Yeah. And I looked at one video that you did. I, I can't remember exactly when, but it was so, I just loved it because you had celebrities go on, football players saying, I love you. I care about it. I think oh. a happy birthday. And I was right. like, that's so cool because it just meant that they took time out of their schedule for even for a minute to say that I hear you and I, I, I hear your story. I know that you're out there and I'm rooting for you. Yeah. You know, it makes people feel cool. good. That was really cool. That was, that was really cool. That's you. Yeah, that was cool. So let me talk to you. Let's talk about this for a second. I know you sold a bunch of T-shirts um, so that you could raise money to, to kind of offset the cost of these sessions. And obviously you do way more than this cost even covers. So give us an idea how many of these – um, these sessions, they're called Forever Love Sessions, right? Right. Well, okay, so I'll, I'll go back so they can kind of understand. So between 2012 and 2013, I, my husband and I were personally, like, funding these, and mm-hmm. it was too much. So basically, yes, he 
he almost gave me an ultimatum. I understand that this is what you want to do, but financially, this can't happen. Right. So um, this campaign company that um, came to me, they said, look, we do um, celebrity campaigns, and we really feel that with your following, you would be successful. So basically, you can sell T-shirt items, whether it's T-shirts, sweatshirts, um, you know, V-necks, whatever it is, but... We take care of everything, and that was like a big thing that I didn't want to have to do. Because you don't have time because you're working no. f- you're working out of your house. Right. right. And I also didn't want the liability of somebody saying like, well, you have my credit card or whatever yeah, it is. Exactly. I, I just didn't want that on me. Mm-hmm. So um, I hooked up with this um, videographer who's awesome. He used to be the Pope's videographer. And he What's put his to, name? Um, Loretto. His okay. Name. And <laughs> he, um, he was awesome. And I basically told him my vision – and he said, let's do it. Let's put it together. So we went and we filmed um, a couple hospitals and we filmed my clients and we basically just put Told it out the story. there. Right. That was a really great video, by the way. Thank you. And we just we just put it out there and we set a goal. Um, I think originally we wanted to sell a thousand items because that would have funded a certain amount of what we needed to fund. Mm-hmm. Um, and we sold almost 5,000. And it was, um, we did it for 20 days and then we came back and we did it again for a two day period. And then we came back again and did it for another two day period. Are you going to do this again? Because I like to buy some t shirts. We will do it in November of 2015. We'll have a new campaign, um, a new t shirt, a new video, a new everything. Um, And those t shirts go to fund these sessions. So those t-shirts went to fund 236 sessions for 2015. Amazing. So I think that's a great way that we can support, especially those those of us who are too busy that want to do something. I mean, I, I strongly encourage you to like uh, Lindsay's page, Love Song Photography on Facebook, and keep track. I mean, November is just around the corner, and the timing's perfect for Christmas and other holiday gifts. If you have someone, to, why not give the gift twice? You're buying a gift, and that gift will in turn help another family mm-hmm. and make a difference. So that's huge. I love it. Thank you so much. So, I mean, I know each month you do about 10, 15 regular sessions, mm-hmm. and you do... Uh, 15 to 20, even more of these forever love sessions. So mm-hmm. we got to be out there supporting you. I'm really excited about this. I've been getting a whole bunch of thought. And actually, there's other things that I want to talk to you about. We can do that off the air um, and see how we can support you. And if you have any other ideas, those of you who are listening, I know it, once you watch some of these videos and you learn Lindsay's story, I challenge you not to do something. So Lindsay is actually very easy to reach out to. You can do so via Facebook, mm-hmm. right? Yes, Love Song Events and Photography is my Facebook. Yeah, and she is available for regular sessions as well. So do encourage you to reach out to her. And she does travel all over the planet, it does seem. But Southern California would be much appreciated for her family and her three daughters, which are adorable. Um, And with that, um, I know you're a very, very busy mompreneur. So I won't take up too much of your time. Um. With that, a huge thank you for coming to tell yes, us your you. story. Um, truly, in, truly, truly inspiring. It's probably one of my most favorite people to meet this year by far. Thank you. So I feel like not only have I met, I feel like I've met a friend and a sister that I want to support. I'm not sure how, but I'm going to find a way. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. This is Winnie Sun. Thanks again for tuning in to the Renegade Millionaire Show. And to learn more about me, you can also check me out at winniesun.com. And of course, follow me on Twitter at SunGroupWP. I was actually um, bugging Lindsay. I mean, Lindsay, you need to have a Twitter page. You're a business. but So maybe she'll have that in the future. But you know what? Her Facebook following now is like over 260,000 followers. So you got to add that yourself to that because I can see it pushing over 300,000 pretty quickly. Thanks again. And until next time.